that's the deal with airplane peanuts. peanuts. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You f***ed off promo shoots. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDB. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. At one point in time, I had seven shows on TV all at once. So in 2012, I had to walk away. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. I auditioned for Mighty Mike. Right. You know, so when I went in there to audition, I'm at the toilet. Uh, when, when Cat Williams right. went to use the bathroom, right. that was, that was, that's the line I had to use to audition. So they switched it up. So I was like, yeah, I can do this Santa Claus role. But I didn't know that, because I did my role like in four days. 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. Cat Williams just called out the entire comedy industry during a rare podcast appearance on Club Shay Shay in order to set the record straight about the real reasons behind his long-standing beef with Kevin Hart, Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, and more, as well as exposing handfuls of comedians who've sold their souls to the Hollywood elites in exchange for hundreds of millions of dollars worth of movie roles and their current level of A-list celebrity fame. During this two-hour and 46-minute bombshell interview, Cat also spoke his mind on a range of other topics, such as his life story leading up to becoming a stand-up icon, his friendship with Prince and the Migos, and even threw his two cents in on Kim and Kanye. What do you expect? The guy married a whore. Like, what? Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. Not he didn't know. He understood that he wanted that. But in this video, we're just going to focus on the comedy beef. And not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, everybody goes to work every day. Buddy. Right. I'm saying, I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes to work every day. Shut up. Shannon Sharp has interviewed dozens of famous comedians on his show. But according to Shannon, he's been trying to get Cat Williams in the guest seat since 2022. The moment that Cat Williams agreed, however, he warned Shannon Sharp that this interview will not only break the internet, but skyrocket Club Shay Shay to a whole new level, which is exactly what happened. The Cat Williams interview is gonna hit well over 40 million views. Shannon's YouTube channel has gained close to 1 million new subscribers in the last four days alone. And at this point, most of the comedians called out by Cat Williams have responded in some way, shape, or form. But before we take a look at those responses, let's first hear a little more of exactly what Cat Williams had to say. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018, you came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019, and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good or became and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. For a five year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just, can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out? And then I can do it. Like it don't need to be overtly homosexual cause I'm not homosexual, right? It doesn't need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and me saying that and them going, oh yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. Do you know what the number 
one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. This is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real African doing a fake African accent. Okay, mo, don't. Uh. This guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got, you, you got to put in some work. And these guys, they take my advice. They change their whole persona. And and then they hate me for it. This is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie he called Soul Plane that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainers and Heiser Bush Best, L L Best Los Angeles Comic Award. Did you win that award, one Cat Williams? It's a simple yes or no. It's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that probably should have been asked to Cedric the Entertainer. I'm asking you. I got you here, though. I know. I couldn't <laughs> believe Cedric didn't get asked that question. <laughs> you still a dude's joking and giving an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I, but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again before he sees you, he'll be talking different when you see him. That's for certain. That's the difference. That's what these comics understand, is that I'm not doing nothing for clout. I don't even recognize clout. But eventually, the Lord is going to let me and you be in one hallway. Kevin Hart done went 25 years without ever being in the same building with me at the same time. What, so what, if what? I go in the building, he walk out. You've never seen us in the same building ever in 25 years. It's like that. <laughs> Why? Why? Yes. Because what? I'm really the product. It's not what you think. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. Kevin Hart was quick to respond to Kat's comments, ironically using this drama as a way to advertise his new movie, saying, quote, Gotta get that anger up out you, champ. It's honestly sad. Please enjoy my movie trailer to my next film, Lift, which will be dropping on Netflix in eight days. There's a moment in the trailer where they say they really love you. I now know she's talking about Kat. Mark your calendars, world. This one's special. Michael Blackson had multiple responses, first tweeting, I'm so confused. I'm African with a fake African accent. My accent had me roasted every day in school and in the comedy clubs in America, and I wish I could get rid of it. Even my Philly accent is fake. I guess the only real thing about me is my deke. And then went on to list his top 10 black comedians alive, putting Cat Williams number four, but clarifying that we all have to agree he's not the same cat from 2005. Tiffany Haddish was next to chime in, saying, I am not mad, I just wish he would get his facts right about me. Dang, I guess I will send him a reminder text. But
but are we sure that's Cat Williams? He looks a lot like Charleston White. Gary Owen quote tweeted someone asking for clarification saying, I'm not sure if Cat was giving me respect or saying I'm not shit. And finally, Joe Rogan quote tweeted the clip of Cat calling out his show and said, I love Cat. He's one of my favorite comics and I'd love to have him on. We talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen. And a few comedians who are commonly on the Joe Rogan experience also reacted to being called out by association, such as Giannis Pappas, who said, I know you ain't talking about me, Cat. I'll show you a dress. Joe Liz said, well, maybe I've never been funny on the show, but I've had my moments on stage by myself. And Mark Norman, who said Cat Williams just dropped the Black Epstein client list. Ever since this episode started going viral, there's been people calling what Cat Williams did a publicity stunt, claiming that nobody was talking about Cat a few months ago, but now he's the toast of the town after saying a few inflammatory statements. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm can't, not a movie can't, star. Can't, can't, can't. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. After watching the entire three-hour podcast, it's hard to say Cat Williams doesn't sound believable, especially because outside of Joe Rogan, none of the responses so far even address the detailed stories that Cat Williams laid out for us on Club Shay Shay. If he truly isn't telling the truth, I don't see why any of these comedians who all have huge platforms of their own haven't come out with any actual facts to prove Cat wrong. Although it is understandable to not not want to engage directly with Kat if these are lies and escalate this conflict even farther, but at this point, 35 million people have watched this podcast, not to mention the hundreds of other clips that have already been posted, so you'd think clearing this up would be a top priority for all these comedians, and it will be interesting to see if any more comedians respond. And hopefully, Cat Williams even takes Joe Rogan up on the offer to have him on the podcast. All of this seems like the type of topic Joe Rogan would love to go super deep into. If Cat doesn't go on JRE, it might be years before we hear from him again. Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really how it is. That's pretty funny. The only laughs I got was making fun of my own set. <laughs> People were like, yeah, you do suck. Dude. I was like, guys, you don't know. I'm actually pretty good in the white community. But Guest spots from last week. The Joe Rogan experience had on Taylor Sheridan. Two Bears, One Cave was Tom and Jessica Curson. Kill Tony this week was with Kurt Fox. YMH and We Might Be Drunk did not have guests. Are You Garbage spoke with Che Dorena. Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast had on James Donald Forbes McCann. Taste Buds battled Baked Potato versus Potato Salad. Brad Williams was a guest on Whiskey Ginger. Hey Babe posted a Best of 2023 recap, as did Tiger Belly. And Bad Friends had on Bobby's Mum. On the way here, we saw an escort while walking and I said, hey, that looks like a prostitute. And we had a good laugh, right? Remember that? Mula. Mula. This is what he said, right? This is good for our audience. When you were walking in this past weekend with Thea Vaughn talked with Sean Strickland. Tom Segura was on the brand new Wayback podcast hosted by Ryan Sickler. The Blocks podcast had on Jimmy Carr. Being Ian with Jordan welcomed Louis Katz. Sarah Sherman and Jack Bensinger visited Stavi's World. Giannis Pappas went on Soder. And Colm Terrell and Ryan Long were on the Legion of Skanks. As far as new stand-up specials are either out right now or coming out soon, Ricky Gervais Armageddon and Dave Chappelle The Dreamer both are out on Netflix. Paul Aaliyah's debut special Detroit Player is available right now on MintComedy.com with promo code Code Paul. Sam Talent, the Toad's Morale is on Matt and Shane's secret YouTube page. Also out on YouTube is Taylor Williamson live at the Comedy Store and Ian Bag vs. The Government. And a few projects are going to be coming out soon. Eric Andre Live Near Broadway is coming out on January 18th. Then Dusty Slay's debut Netflix special Workin' Man comes out on January 23rd. Followed by Taylor Tomlinson Have It All, which premieres globally on Netflix February 13th, 2024. If this is your first time visiting this channel and you're wondering what this video is all about, welcome to the Joke World comedy news update, bringing you all the biggest news in the comedy world every single week. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe right now if you want to stay in the comedy loop. Also, feel free to check out some more videos on this channel related to all your favorite comedians, including the funniest moments from last month on the end screen right after this. Bad joke world.
and the world is W R L D. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out.